Let's now put our major keys in order from least to most sharps and from least to most flats. The order of the sharp scales is C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, C sharp. Also notice which sharp gets added starting with F sharp, then C sharp, then G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, and finally B sharp. Do you notice the similarity between the order of the keys and the order of the sharps that you add? They are shifted two places from each other. The next note in order is always five notes higher if you count the first note as one. Now do the same thing with the flat keys. The order is C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, and C flat. The flats added in order starting with B are B, E, A, D, G, C, F. Once again, the order of the tonics and the order of the flats are the same but shifted one place in the opposite direction compared to the sharps. The order of the sharps is F, C, G, D, A, E, B, and the order of the flats is B, E, A, D, G, C, F. Notice also that the order of the sharps and flats are exactly backwards to each other, or retrograde, as we musicians say. We can create 15 musical worlds, each with their own collection of just seven notes. But despite that difference, each world sounds similar. Each world is a major key. Each of these 15 worlds belongs to the same musical universe the universe of tonal music. For now, we will always stay on one world, in one key at a time. Remember, with tonal music, you are always in a key. The music always belongs to a specific world. When we create a key signature, we use sharp and flat symbols to create a specific musical world where certain notes fulfill specific functions. We create a musical pitch space that is warped, where the musical steps are not equal. The musical space between Mi and Fa and between T and Do is squished. These notes are closer together than other neighbors in this world. Key signs are always consistent, so they are easier to read. The sharp and flat symbols always go in the same place, and they always go in the same order. They combine into a single symbol, just like letters combine to form words. If the sharp or flat symbol is not on the correct line or space, or if it is out of order, it does not make a key signature. When you write your key signs, the pattern of sharps or flats must be exactly correct. Watch and copy the sharp and flat symbols in their correct place and order in both treble and bass clefs. Practice writing the sharps in order in both the treble and bass clefs. F C G D A E and B. Next, practice the flats in order in both the treble and bass clefs. B, E, A, D, G, C, and F. Remember, when you write a key signature, if a sharp or flat is out of order or on the wrong pitch, it is like having a letter out of order or a wrong letter in a word on a spelling test. 
For each of the major scales that we have discovered, go back and write the key signature for each major scale. If you take time to look for patterns, you will see that the last sharp of the key signature is always the leading tone. The penultimate or next to the last sharp is always the third note of the scale, and the third sharp from the end of the key signature is always scale degree 6, and so on. If you examine the flat keys, the last flat is always scale degree 4, the penultimate flat is always the tonic, the third flat from the end is always scale degree 5, and so on. If you write out the scale degrees for all of the sharps in C sharp major, and all of the flats in C flat major, the two series of numbers will be retrograde of each other. These are some shortcuts for dealing with major key signatures. The last sharp in the key signature is always the leading tone. If I know the leading tone, T, I can find Do, the next note name up one half step higher. If the last sharp is G sharp, I am in the key of A. If I am writing sharp key signs, I write the sharps in order until I get to the leading tone. For example, to write the key sign for B major, I know that the leading tone is the next note name down one half step below B, which is A sharp. So I write the sharps in order and stop on A sharp. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, stop. I can find the tonic of a flat key signature by simply looking at the penultimate flat. When I am writing flat key signatures, I write out the flats in order until I get to the tonic, then I add one more flat. So to write the key sign for D flat major, I write B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, then add one more, G flat. Key is one of the most important concepts that you need to understand. You need to understand what notes belong to a key and that any other notes do not. You must be able to understand these note collections on the keyboard and on the musical staff. We create keys using key signatures that tell us which notes exist in our world and which notes do not. When I play in the key of A major, I never ask myself if G should be sharped or not, because the note G does not even exist. G sharp exists, and is a completely different note than G, not just a G that has been changed by a sharp. Part of their names are the same, but G and G sharp are completely different notes. They cannot exist in the same key. Remember, you are always in a key, a world of only seven notes, not infinite and complicated, but rather simple and constrained.